Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dan with Adventuring Today. Thanks for being here today. I've got a Ram. I got a 2020. So I wanted to do a quick little review on this one. Uh, this is a 2020 Laramie, which for those of you who may not be familiar, if you're a Ford person, which I think I've got a lot of Ford followers on my channel, uh, if you're a Ford person, a, a Lariat is kind of like a Laramie from ram and uh so it's kind of their mid uh mid trim level and it's a this is a really nice truck i am uh, driving this for the day today want to show you some of the features and specs i'm gonna do another video on a little mile per gallon challenge i'll take it for a drive but for this video i wanted to talk about some of the features uh show you quite a few of the details about the interior talk about the truck a little bit just from um, my initial impressions of it. I have not spent a lot of time with Ram trucks, but I wanted to kind of contrast some differences between this and a Ford, some of the things I maybe like a little better about the Ford, and some of the things I like a little bit better about the Ram. So anyway, with that, why don't we uh, jump into the engine? That's right, it's got the Hemi. And this thing is a beast. I think it's 395 horsepower and 410 pound feet of torque. This is a powerful motor. It's one of the biggest gas motors you can buy today um, in the marketplace. Of course, there's the 6.2 and the 7.3s from Ford, but I mean, this is on the upper range as far as uh, size goes for motors. And this is a gem. Hemi has been such a huge success for Dodge, for Ram, whatever you want to call them these days. But they've been putting this engine in their high-performance cars and trucks and luxury sedans and everything. And it's just developed a really good following. It's been a reliable motor, lots of power, and it's become more efficient over the years. So, you know, with this truck and mixed driving, you'll probably get somewhere in the um, 17, 18, 19 range, unless you're really deep into the throttle. Of course, that'll drop it down to the low to mid teens, but it's a, uh, it's a great motor. So anyway, look at how much space there is in here. I mean, it is just a huge engine bay, but I mean, there are so many places in here where you can actually see the concrete right there. You can just see the the ground um, right through the engine bay. Um, you can also see it a little bit over here, over by the uh, suspension and so forth. And everything is pretty easy to work on. I mean, super easy access to the battery. Uh, if you ever need a new alternator, it's just right here on top. It's a uh, really easy to access. Um, the air filter, you know, just look at all this space in here. I mean, it's just enormous the air filter is is really a big size air filter it can hold a lot of dirt a lot of capacity and uh, that's really important that you know you don't see you know the use of smaller filters to save a little bit of money they uh, did not hold back with this motor and went ahead and put some really heavy duty equipment on it to uh, keep it strong for the long haul um, really easy to access the engine oil which is right here um, here's your a fluid fill for your windshield wiper really easy access right up in front this is for your radiator um, to uh, top that off if you want um, and then of course this is your uh, radiator big fan in here now this is an electric fan um, you know like on diesel pickup trucks you tend to have a, uh, a fan that's actually operated by a clutch that's connected directly to the motor. Those tend to be a little more powerful than these electric fans. But in a vehicle like this, where you're focused on fuel mileage, electric fans are the way to go. And um, you're getting a little bit of extra mile per gallon out of a motor like this for the EPA. Uh, that's where they've gone. Now, this is a, a highly adequate fan for this engine. Um, so you don't need something that is uh, directly uh, connected to the motor, but, um, it, it, either way, it's very very adequate and uh, should do a really good job. Just not quite as powerful as something you might see connected to like a, you know, like a power stroke or something like that. So anyway, nice engine. Um, I love what they've done with uh, the front end of this truck. I mean, if you can see this here, you got the Ram LED headlights. Um, this truck has got some pretty nice features on it. 
and I'll show you a few of those things when we get on the inside, but boy, they've really done a really good job with uh, the front nose on this truck, in my opinion. Now, everything is subjective, but I really like what they uh, have done here. Um, the Laramies come standard with quite a bit of chrome, so if you're a person that likes chrome, you're getting it. You're getting the chrome across the uh, front of the truck with the bumper and so forth. You get chrome mirror caps, you get chrome handles on the doors. Of course, you get a chrome, chrome bumper in back here. Now this one's got the plastic drop-in uh, bed liner. It's a Dura liner. I prefer the spray-ins uh, over these, but these are, you know, typically a little bit less money and uh, but it's just it's a little harder to get into like access hooks and things like that you know um, where the spray ends it really opens up the bed a little bit more probably a little more durable overall but this is a nice size bed uh, there's not a lot of intrusion from the tires inside this bed and uh, you know you can haul quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of stuff in here a lot of mulch a lot of rock the walls are pretty high and uh, it's pretty nice. So this truck unfortunately doesn't have the fancy tailgate on it. It's got the traditional one. And um, so anyway, so let's jump inside the truck and talk about some of the features here inside this bad boy. Now, first off, I've got the seat adjusted for me. And as you can see here, uh, there's not much room. So, you know, for me to own this truck and this configuration, um, my kids are gonna have a really hard time getting back here, let alone an adult. But, uh, you know, but so it's a little bit smaller here in the back. And, um, but it does have the pull down armrest with some cup holders in there. And, you know, if I was needing to drive the kids around town or something like that, I could move that seat up and I'd be okay. But to go on a long haul, um, my seat's gotta be there. So uh, for me, this is not a, a five seater. This is more like a four seater over the long haul because nobody could sit behind me in this pickup truck. So that might be a little knock on it over the Ford. Now the interior on the other hand, whoa, this is nice. <laughs> and I'm gonna get this thing fired up and I'll show you all about it here in just a second. Okay, I just jumped in the truck and at when I first jumped in this truck earlier this morning, one thing I noticed right away was that the seat bottom is pretty comfortable. Um, but the seat back was not, it's a little bit firm right in this middle section for me. Um, I'm about six, seven and, um, you know, I just felt like it, it, the seat back could be a little more comfortable. Now maybe this will break in over time. I don't know. But, uh, but what's pretty cool is when you jump in, you get this, uh, glowing start stop button in the middle of the dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and push that. So push the brake. I'm gonna push the button, which is right over here, and it fires right up. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do here at the beginning is I'm gonna um, talk to you a little bit about the gauge cluster. Now, you probably missed that a little bit. Let's start it up again. You get this nice little gauge sweep, which I think, I don't know if it was Corvette that started that, you know, back about 20, 25 years ago, but, a lot of car manufacturers have uh, started doing that. I think it's pretty uh, pretty neat. So anyway, I'm going to run through the gauge cluster here. So as I'm pushing the buttons, I'm just putting this pushing this bottom button here on the steering wheel. And you know this screen is going to be for your audio. This next one is going to be for um, um, email, so you can connect your phone and you can you know store messages in here and so forth. Um, here we've got a, a setting screen. So you go into this and you can um, adjust your centers and what you have and so forth. Um, you can adjust your compass, um, what you want to have outside temperature showing, and all these different things. So let's, uh, let's jump over that here real quick. And what I want to do is I want to show you where you'll probably spend most of your time. So we've got a digital a mile per hour gauge, which I think is... Uh, a little repetitious, but anyway, a lot of cars are showing you that. Here you've got a nice little battery meter that is uh, electric, uh, digitally shown, but you also have it down here. So you've got that one that's kind of duplicate on that. Over here you've got average miles per gallon. And um, and if you want to reset this, you just you know hold in the OK button, which is right here, and it resets. So um, you've got that. 
Um, if you want to jump over to another computer, you just hit the button to the left or to the right. And so you got two trip computers. So this is your trip section. If you go down one more time, you get your um, average miles per gallon. I usually reset these if I'm, uh, so this is like a trip A um, and a, and I usually reset the trip buttons like this every time I fill up the car with gas. Um, the other one is for your individual trips and so forth. And um, But if I'm gonna just wanna get a feel for what I did on a tank of gas, that's what I'm using trip A or maybe trip B for is uh, for those. And um, so the next one down though is music and we're right back to where we, where we started. Now, one thing I'm gonna show you here, which I think is pretty neat about how they've uh, figured out the the specialties with this truck and so forth, especially when towing, is this screen right here. I love this screen. I wish all truck manufacturers had a screen like this. Ford does not, and they really need to. So on one spot, you get in the actual, down to the individual degrees, the coolant temperature, the transmission temperature, the oil temperature, and the oil pressure. So if you were towing a heavy load, uh, towing a travel trailer or something for work, you know, this is probably a screen that you would want to have turned on for most of that trip so you could measure the temperatures, especially on a hot summer day. So this is so nice that they have thought about that, thought about the importance of it, the need, and so forth, and uh, included that there on the, on the screen. Um, of course, Ram gives you buttons on the back of the steering wheel, so they're right back here. If you want to uh, change your stations, you can do that on the left side. If you want to change your volume, you can do that by using the same buttons on the right-hand side, and you can adjust the volume up and down. That's pretty neat. Um, over here on the steering wheel, you've got your cruise control. So this is just your standard setup. I won't spend any time on that. But this is a gear limit button. And so um, I think for this to show up, you got to have it in gear. So I'm going to put the vehicle in drive, which you just turn the knob here, and you're in drive. And then if you look on the screen right here you'll see these plus and minus buttons so if i wanted to limit the truck to let's say the third gear so now it's only going to shift one through three all i do is i push this positive button right here for gear limit if i wanted to go to four i push that button in and now i'm limited on only going through gears one through four so this will actually go all the way up to eighth gear it's an eight speed transmission um, on this vehicle so it'll stop at eight and that's it uh, push one more time and it goes back to zero now uh, the truck can shift in any of the gears so the difference between with the mode now and having this actually sit on number eight is zero because you're not blocking anything out but can you imagine having a trailer that uh, you're towing and you're kind of in hilly terrain and the engine is constantly shifting between like seventh and eighth or maybe six seventh and eighth and you wanted to limit the vehicle to say sixth gear, um, then it would shift all the way up to sixth gear, but then hold it there. So you've got quite a bit of torque and you wouldn't be constantly shifting as you come into each one of these little hills along your trip. And this will help uh, with wear and tear in the transmission, but also can make it even as a more efficient uh, towing experience, but also one that's also more comfortable and probably run the transmission at a much cooler degree because it's not doing nearly as much work. So, okay, over here on the left-hand side, we've got our headlight controls. You've got automatic. Um, this is a manual on. These are your running lights. And then this is, of course, is off. And if you want to turn on the fog lights, you're just pushing the button right there, and then your fog lights are on. Um, these control the dimmers on the gauges and the dome. Um, down here you can control where your pedals are. So this was a nice feature that are on quite a few cars, but this actually controls your uh, brake pedal and your gas pedal. So for taller people, you want them away from you. Shorter people, you might want them a little bit higher. Over here we've got our gear shift lever. So this is, this is pretty neat. Um, it opened up a whole ton of space here in the center console, which I'll talk about in just a second. But if you want to engage reverse, you just turn it to reverse, uh, neutral, and then drive. And you just got to remember to put it back in park when you get to where you're going. Um, if you want to go to four-wheel drive high, you just push the button and you're in four-wheel drive high. Uh, it takes a couple seconds to shift and then you're there. Here's four-wheel drive auto. Um, which is different than most like heavy duty trucks. You know, you can't just run it in four wheel drive high. Typically there's not a four wheel drive auto setting. 
uh, on these quarter ton trucks, you um, you do have that, but um, quarter ton, 1500 range trucks, like an F-150, a 1500 from Ram or from GM. And then of course you've got four wheel drive low. Now typically with these, you need to uh, shift into park or you shift into uh, neutral to shift into four wheel drive low. Um, with the Rams, you gotta shift into park, takes a few seconds for it to shift. Now we're there. And we're good. And we're good. So now we're locked in. All right, so but we'll put it back in two wheel drive. Okay. Now to the, the center console, this is where the magic is. And this doesn't have the huge, you know, uh, what is it, 12, 15 inch screen on it. It's got your standard screen, but all the functionality is here and it works awesome. This is definitely an advantage on a Ram versus a Ford uh, and probably versus the General Motors too, is how quickly this system works. It, it You just touch the button and it just moves for you right away. And the resolution on it is fantastic. You'll, you'll never be able to pick up how good the resolution is on this screen until you're actually in one of these vehicles. It's so nice. So, you know, all these buttons are pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to go through a lot of those details with you. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to show you some of the neat things that they've done with the um, app button. So there is a whole bunch of things that you can do through here. Now, one thing that I do find interesting is that the rear view mirror has no buttons on it. There's no ways to adjust its setting. But if you want to turn off your automatic dimming mirror, you've got to come into this app button and then go to the mirror dimmer button to turn it on or turn it off. And um, so what I found with vehicles is if you like the way the technology was built with the rear view mirror, you leave it on. If you don't like it, you leave it off. Um, there's not really a whole lot of conditions where you would change that. It either works really, really good or it doesn't work. But most of these vehicles today, it works really good and you just leave it on and you're, you're good to go. Um, here's a place where you can turn on the heated steering wheel, but we also have a button here in the dashboard where we can do that. Uh, here's where you can turn on, say, the passenger's seat heater, but there's also a position on the dashboard where you can do that also. So uh, some, of the, some of the features are here in the dash screen, um, and they're repeated up here in the electronic screen. So, th but there's a couple pages of information, so um, it's, a, it's a really good, well-thought-out system with lots of ability and flexibility and the speed at which this works, like I say, is really, really good. Um, the backup camera, the resolution on this is like a 4K television set at home. I mean, it is truly unbelievable. Um, all vehicles should be built with resolutions this good in this modern day and age. Not all of them are, but this is another big advantage for Ram over, say, Ford, is the, the great resolution that the screen has. It's just absolutely fantastic. It's, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Now, General Motors has done some leaps and bounds with their surround view cameras and so forth. Um, this vehicle doesn't have that feature, but um, General Motors cameras have become just fantastic. Also, Ford needs to catch up with these other two manufacturers with regards to their camera technology. Now, you probably saw that that uh, zoomed in there. So if you're trying to hook up a trailer, you can push the button and zoom right in on where your trailer hitch would be, which would be about right there. So again, very high resolution and uh, very efficient. So um, you do have a tow haul button, which is right here. You just push this down. You've got traction control right here. If you want to turn it off, you push that down. You've got USB and USB-C ports along with the three and a half millimeter uh, input. So lots of uh, flexibility here with keeping devices charged or hooking up media to your entertainment system. Really nice. Uh, you've got a great, uh, pretty deep um, glove compartment here. So if you can see on the inside, you got a little light in there. Uh, looks really nice. A uh, little bit of a hard plastic on this, if you can hear that. I don't know if that rattles over time, but uh, but it seems to work just fine. Um, down here, you got a felt-lined uh, glove glove compartment, pretty decent sized, uh, not too bad. 
but the center console is just really ridiculous it's just it's literally ridiculous it's got so many neat little features built into it so this is one of them um you know there's all kinds of ways that you could um, use this to store phones you can set phones in here because these move out um you could use this to store pens you could store pens or pencils up here um, just anything you want to attach into these little holders um, for easy access you don't have to go digging around in the bottom of the compartment that's what this is all about i think it's an awesome idea and uh super smart so the storage compartment goes way back here so i got oh my hand can't even fit all the way to the back um, you've got this device that pulls forward and pulls back which is really nice cup holders here change compartment you open up this piece here for i mean you could like a little baby could sleep in here you know i mean it's literally that big <laughs> um it's got a line here that um says max fill line so anything that you put down here in the bottom you want to keep below that line so that this can slide back and forth but this is just a huge compartment i mean this space right here is bigger than you know most cars center storage spaces and you get this whole area up front and all of the creativity uh that's been designed into this is along with another power port down here which is your standard you know like 110 volt uh 400 watt connection and then um of course you get the ram you know metric system back here for figuring out all kinds of different things i don't know how much of this is actually used by people but i think it's pretty cool and more manufacturers should do something like that with uh with this space um you also get storage right here so uh, with another usb port i mean they have just thought about this interior from an interior uh ford doesn't have anything like this General Motors doesn't have anything like this. Um, Ram has really set the bar with regards to the interior, which is why I'm spending most of the video just really going over the details. You get cup holders in the back. So you've got two in the center armrest, two right here, two up here. And then of course, you've got huge space in the doors. So you could put bottles of water, bottles of soda, Gatorade, whatever you're drinking over here. Nice deep pocket in here. And then also there's a, a place right here where you can store a phone, a wallet, keys, whatever you want to put in over there. So, I mean, they have really done a good job. Now, I can't play music on the radio because, you know, it, it, chances are the video will get stolen by whoever made that music. But this vehicle has got an Alpine sound system in it. And, um, you know, you can see that right up there. It sounds fantastic. I have listened to, uh, my, my, my truck has the Sony system from Ford. I've also drove many trucks that have the, the B&O Play system from Ford. They just do not compare to this Alpine system. This Alpine system is absolutely fantastic. It's really, really good. Um, so with that, you know, we got a little um, upper, uh, the, the roof uh, console area up here. You know, you've got a control to open the rear window, which is power operated. really really nice um you've got the ability to uh lock the doors um you got a light up here for uh you know map lights and so forth i mean you just got all kinds of flexibility place to store your sunglasses of course nothing new about that garage door opener is right here and but did you notice in the back there's speakers in the roof in the back i mean i'm telling you the stereo is unbelievable if you're a, if you like to listen to music and you don't want to spend a lot of money in the aftermarket but that, but the the stereo system is a deciding factor for you with the truck. Come check out what this Alpine system is all about. It has got the bass. It's got lots of good um, distortion-free music, and it gets pretty loud. So it's a really uh, really nice system. Um, okay, so with that, let's jump back outside and let's check out the, some important numbers here. So, all right, so. What I, one thing I want to point out, point to is that tire pressures, um, cold tire pressure of 36 psi uh, across the board. So I, I, I mentioned that because you know these 1500 trucks tend to ride a little bit uh, more car-like than they used to. Definitely more car-like than um, Super Duty trucks and heavy-duty trucks. 
and part of that, uh, the way they do that is through the suspension system, but also running some softer tire pressures. And, um, you know, these tire pressures are actually even softer than like what's on my Expedition. And um, I think part of that is to generate a little bit more of a, uh, a softer ride. So anyway, with regards to weights, and I'll take a picture of this, so you can see this a little bit better, but um, the front GAWR is 3,900 pounds. The rear is 4,100 pounds. And your total uh, cargo capacity on this truck is 1,772 pounds. 1,772 pounds. Okay, see, so I'll take a picture so you can see that a little bit better. Um, so not too bad of a payload capacity. Um, I would say it's not great, but um, this does have the heavy V8 engine, which sucks a few hundred pounds out of that. And um, and since I don't know what type of uh, pack, so what type of packages this truck has on it, um, it may not be optioned with the best package on it for the most cargo capacity. So sorry about that, but this is a rental that I got and. Um, so I don't have a window sticker on it, so I can't tell you exactly what all the features are on it and what is standard or prices or anything like that. But it's a good looking truck. It's quiet. The um, engine has got a pretty decent little growl to it. Um, you can hear it here idling. It's pretty quiet. I would say the uh, Ford has maybe a little bit more bark coming out of the exhaust um, on their V8 engine at least. So here's the connections for your seven pin and your four pin, pretty conveniently placed. And uh, it's just a good looking truck. So been really happy with it so far. Anyway, that's it. That's my little interior and exterior walk around on the 2020 Ram 15, 1500 with the Hemi 5.7 liter V8. So some of the reasons why you may want to purchase this truck, um, it's really competitively priced real high quality interior this engine is a true beast it is amazing the transmission is very smart well thought out it, it seems like it always knows the right gear to be in the stereo is amazing the center console on it and all the technology there and the high resolution camera system um, everything about that is really really good the information you get when towing through the um, the dashboard uh, between the gauges is really, really good. Great headlights with the uh, LED headlights and a super good looking front end. I mean, this is just a really, really good truck. So I'd say this is a, a step up from your basic work truck, but you see a lot of guys that are doing hard work buying these Laramies because they want the leather seats and a few nicer features in it. And really from a price perspective, you are paying a little bit more, but you're also getting quite a bit more truck. So um, anyway, with that, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for being here today. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share with your friends, and we will see you really soon. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Bye. We're taking our shot. Bring what you got. We're going all the way to the top. We will hear the sound of one million people screaming our names when we're backstage. We'll play loud, surfing the crowd. Everybody's jumping around.